Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today in our Things You Missed in Elden Ring series will be our last video in Lyurnia for a while. There's still a few things in the north and the south, but they're much later game areas, so we'll come back to them later in this series. For now, today we're going to cover Caria Manor. Before we get into it, I implore you to subscribe if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more. And obviously, if you like the video, please give it a like. We're going to start out by covering the right hand side of the Caria Manor grounds. Straight away, sprint to the right hand side and up these two short flights of stairs that you see me going up. In this room, take out the enemy and you'll be able to grab a Glintstone Craftsman's Cookbook 6. Turn right out of here, being cautious of the enemies and the traps, and you can grab a Somber Smithing Stone 3. Now for the rest of the right hand side, I've summoned Banished Knight Engval and I've just gone through and killed all the enemies, so it's easier for me to show you where all the items are. The other main things to point out are just here, on this corpse behind the big rock, you can grab a shield. And then if you hop off the left, just here will be a scarab that you can kill for the carrion piercer sorcery. That's it for the right hand side, so I'll meet you back at the initial site of grace and I'll take you through the left. The right hand side was way more interesting. You've probably already grabbed all of the awesome loot, honestly. And also the left hand side contains way more of the really big hand enemies. So it's going to be a lot more difficult to clear. But it's always worth doing so, even if just to grind some runes to make sure that you're not falling behind on levels. Then off this corpse, you can grab six glintstone fireflies. And just a little bit further ahead, two more rhymed crystal buds. That's it for the left hand side. So now you can head up to the main building up the stairs, go and grab the Sight of Grace at the end of the room, then turn back on yourself and run all the way to the pedestal, and just behind it will be a corpse with a smithing stone 4 on it that you can grab. Now we'll move into the main area of Caria Manor itself. As soon as you step outside from this Sight of Grace, you'll see these walkways. There's a few traps scattered around, and also, though there are seemingly no enemies, there's a load of spectral knights that will spawn all over the place, so just be aware in front of you and behind you at all times. Follow the northern walkways first where I'm going, and once you get to the very end, you can jump off here onto this platform below. Once you get down here, clear out the four hands, and you can go up and grab yourself the Arumi weapon. Turn back around and facing away from where you just picked up the Arumi, turn right, Keep following the walkway along and you can grab some rhymed crystal buds from the wooden ledge here. Then go further down and underneath the stairs is a golden rune 3. Now go all the way back the other way and there'll be an abductor virgin you need to fight. And then once you hop down after fighting her you can grab a somber smithing stone 3. Now go back to the site of grace we were just at. And this time we'll head back out onto the walkways, but we'll turn left and go east. As you're heading along the east walkways, run all the way to the end. A bunch of knights will spawn, so deal with them as you see fit. The Rhea Lucarian gauntlets you've just seen me pick up aren't standard. They're from a spectral knight I killed before hitting record. Then you can grab the rune arc from the corpse hanging over the edge. But more importantly, you now want to hop off the ledge here onto this building, then hop down again onto the building below, be careful not to hop directly through the hole or you will probably die. Once you get down here, you can loot a chest with the Sword of Night and Flame, which before the patch was considered the strongest weapon in the game, and even now is still significantly powerful. There are two different attacks it can do when you use its weapon art, or Ash of War should I say. So when you use the Sword of Flame, it will do a horizontal sweeping arc of fire. However, the really powerful one is the Sword of Night part of the weapon arc. This is basically a miniature version of the Comet Azure spell, so it will shoot out a giant beam of light, which just does tremendous amounts of damage. Like, holy hell, this sword, it just carried me through the entire game. So if you've got the stats to use it, highly recommend it. Loads of fun, incredibly powerful. And now it is yours to wield as you see fit. And then once you've done this, what you can do is head all the way back up to the walkways again. Take the northern walkways and right at the end, you'll see this lift. Take the lift up and I'll meet you at the next site of grace. 
Once you've rested at this site of grace and come out the front, you'll see a golden seed in front of you. Grab that. And then once you've done that, where I'm aiming the bow over here, there is another item over there. This is supposed to be a things you missed, not an entire walkthrough. So I'll let you go and grab that yourself. I'm sure you don't need that much hand holding. Once you've done that, clear out the fairly powerful wolves in this area. And then you can come up the stairs here where you see the troll knight in front of you. Ignore him for now and turn left. Jump over this little gap and up the ladder. Clear out the undead mage and then you can grab a magic grease on the right hand side. Go up the next flight of stairs. There's another undead dude here you can take out. And now you can scooch around the left hand side and run around the back of the troll knight. And the sorcerer is just in front of him. You do want to clear out this whole area but do it in any order you want. I opted to take out this dude here once I summoned Knight Engval. Then I turned around and cleared out the sorcerers and the troll knight. And then he will drop his sword. Once you've done that, you can head up this flight of stairs and loop around the other side. Drop down the ledge here. And down here you can grab a smithing stone four. Continue up the stairs, clearing out the rest of the enemies, and you'll come across the boss room for the final boss of this area. We won't go there yet because we have one more thing to explore before then, so we'll come back here. So the last thing we want to do, if you do a 180 from the boss room, you can grab a golden rune 4 from the corpse hanging off the balcony here. And then facing the boss room again, turn left and go through here. Carefully drop down these ledges and then take out all of the living jars. Once they're all dead, you'll be able to loot eight crystal darts from one side and a cracked pot from the other side. Now drop down here, take out even more living jars on this level and then drop down again. There's a bunch more little ones and two big ones side by side here, so be very careful. I was super cautious and actually consumed a starlight shard to recover some of my FP. Don't do this. Ideally, Never use your Starlight Shards. They're used as currency for a particular NPC later on in the game. So save all your Starlight Shards. Never use them, never sell them. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> now once they're all dead, you can grab a Smithing Stone 3. But more importantly, you can jump back down to the ramparts here. And grab the Ash of War Carrion Grandeur. And that's it. The last thing we have to do is fight the boss. So whilst we're absolutely annihilating her, I would just like to say, firstly, if you've stuck around this long, thank you so much. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all them things that are going to help us grow and continue to do what we do best. And if you'd really like to support the channel and go one step beyond, if you have a little bit of cash at the end of the month and you want to help your new favourite Elden Ring creator pumping out great quality content for you every other day, then consider becoming a member. It'll give you priority response to any questions or comments you may have, along with hopefully down the line early access to videos and members only posts and polls. Thank you as always and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye.